بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد After being blessed by Allah Ta'ala to stand and give advice to my brothers and sisters in Islam regarding the issue of the somewhat famous magician named Kamal al-Makki may Allah Ta'ala guide him and those who would support him and defend him in his falsehood his promotion of the magic of Chris Angel and Dynamo, in his unprecedented fatwas, that magic, illusionary magic is permissible in Islam and it's an acceptable tool in the field of da'wah. May Allah Ta'ala guide him and all of those who would sit silently or support such falsehood. In the fitna that ensued, there was a man who decided to defend Kamal al Mecki, as it was reported to me and conveyed to me in an email, that he decided, and he was an Al Maghrib Institute instructor like Kamal, he said, what is all this nonsense? Or stop all this kufr nonsense. And he decided to defend his co-star, his TV co-star and his co-lecturer at Al Maghrib Institute. And then I found that this was no ordinary lecturer. This was the vice president of Al-Maghrib Institute himself, Walid Basyuni. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. And then I looked into his affair, and I looked into what he says and what he teaches, and I found the most disgusting blend, or attempt to blend Salafiyya with Ikhwaniyya, with the methodology of Al-Ikhwan Al-Muslimin, the deviant sect, the political sect, that sect which pretends to be concerned for the deen and for the, the book and the sunnah and the way of the salaf, yet their goals are political, their ambitions are leadership, their ambitions are governments and political goals. You see them with two faces. They quote the salaf and they quote the book and the sunnah and they quote Salafi scholars, Sheikh bin Baz and Sheikh bin Uthaymeen and Sheikh al-Albani, they quote them. They quote them specifically because they have passed and they do not quote the scholars of today. Their scholars of today are the likes of Safar al-Hawali. Their scholars of today are the likes of Salman al-Awda, Muhammad al-Urayfi, the storyteller, Aed al-Qarni, Yusuf al-Qaradawi. Their Scholars that they return to that they don't tell you about are those people. While we have upright, knowledgeable scholars of today, the Mufti of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Abdul Aziz, Al Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan al Fawzan, Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi al Madkhali, a number of shuyukh who are senior, full of insight, full of love and concern for this ummah, and they are the ones you return to in times of fitan in times of bloodshed, in times of strife, you return to them. But these people are evil. These people at Maghrib Institute instructors, and they're, and those similar to them, they are evil. They pinch you off from the scholars. You are in the West with physical distance between you and the scholars. The job of a concerned student of knowledge or caller to the way of Allah is to connect you to the people who will educate you about your religion, the true scholars of Islam. That's their job. But they betray you for a price. But they betray you to gain your following, to pinch you off, to take you where they want you to go, along with their scholars, Salman al-Awda, in Saudi Arabia, tweeting against the Saudi government openly, teaching the people to raise their voices against their government. They want to see in Saudi Arabia what they're seeing in Egypt now. They pretend that they love the deen. They pretend that they have this ghira, that they love the Muslims, and they want the Muslims to have their honor, and they want the Muslims to have better leaders. They pretend this. And they lead the Muslims with their harmful fatwas, headlong, right into clashes with their governments, with their leaders, bloodshed and killing. They lead them directly into this madness. And then they step back and they say, Subhanallah, the Muslims are killing one another. What a shame. Yasufaha. Who led them to that? 
Who told them to raise their voices? Who told them to make so-called non-violent protesting and demonstrations? Who led them to this menhaj mubtada? Other than you, Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Then you come and say, Subhanallah, the Muslims are fighting each other. You told them to go in the streets and raise their voices against their leaders. And then you say, Subhanallah, look, there's a clash between the leaders and the regular people. And when the fighting ensues, and when the clashes take place, you stand there like some just observer and some concerned advisor. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Shameful people. Totally shameful that they stand in America raising their voices, telling the Muslims in the various lands to stand up in the streets and to raise their voices and to come out and to so-called non-violently protest and demonstrate, having no basis in the way of our Salaf, having nothing to do with the Salafi methodology and da'wah, the da'wah of tasfiya and tarbiyah, the da'wah of cultivating the people and educating them, getting them in a position to increase their iman so they deserve better from Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala will give them who they deserve. This manhaj is lost with these people. Ikhwan al-Muslimin, beware of them. This man, Walid Basyuni, just to show his connection to al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin, you can look at his Twitter account, you can look at his Facebook account, you can look and see who he likes and who he follows, and you will see the political activists that I have already mentioned. You'll hear him encouraging people to vote for this person and that person. You'll hear him lying on the scholars of Islam, his own shuyukh as he claims, saying that they're in total agreement that what? That people should come out to vote to make sure that they practice their political rights. He doesn't say, as some scholars would say in a certain fatwa, in a certain situation, when the vote is close, when there's an obvious difference, when the Muslims might actually make a difference in that instance, while they hate the system of democracy, and while they oppose the very foundation of voting, and it's not from Islam, they say it's permissible for a Muslim to try to elect someone who would be the lesser of two evils. Some scholars say that. The other scholars say, leave it alone, all of it, leave it. Listen to what this man tries to present to the Muslims who would have good thoughts about him, yet he betrays them. To me, President Obama is a person who is not an Islamophobe. But Governor Romney never assured me that he would not. So he's talking about the possible leaders in an election in America. Be one. Go vote on Tuesday. And make sure that you cast your vote. He's openly encouraging the Muslims to go vote on Tuesday and cast their votes. Make sure that you choose good people in your local level and in a federal level. So he's not talking about a specific instance where the vote is close and electing one leader over another while hating that system may prove to save the Muslims from some harm or may grant them some advantage that they could not gain through the other party. He's not giving you the fatwa of the scholars, brothers and sisters, but what he is giving you is this. And make sure that you choose Barack Obama as the next president of the United States. A clear endorsement of Barack Obama. All major scholars. All major scholars. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. Don't let this man fool you. That I know, such as my own teachers, such as Sheikh Baz, Sheikh Nathimi Rahimahullah. Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymeen, two of his teachers as he claims. And also scholars such as Shaykh Al-Qaradawi in Allah. And Shaykh Al-Qaradawi, he's referring to Yusuf Al-Qaradawi of Al-Ikhwan Al-Muslimin. A list of scholars. And a long All list. All council of fatwas. All councils of fatwas. In the Muslim world and in the West. In the Muslim world and in the West. And he's making a reference to himself and his own council of fiqh and fatwa. Encourage Muslims to participate in election. All of them. Encourage the Muslims to participate in elections. Did you hear it? In one specific instance or in general as part of the everyday life of a citizen? To make sure that they practice their political rights. To get a benefit only in one specific instance or to make sure that they practice their political rights? Walid Basyuni is lying on the scholars of Islam right here. He has claimed consensus of everyone that he knows from the scholars and all fit councils. 
that they all say Muslims are encouraged to take part in the system of voting, to make sure that they practice their political rights. This is not what the scholars of Islam say, Ikhwan. This man is deceiving you. And to be part of uh, uh, spreading good. And the scholars don't say this is to be part of spreading good. They don't say this is to practice a person's political rights. In Islam, we don't have political rights like what he is describing. We don't have that the common person has a right to decide. He has the same rank and he has the same... His opinion has the same opinion as the vote of a knowledgeable scholar of Islam and someone who is devoutly concerned for the future of the ummah. This is not Islam. We don't have this in Islam. We have that the people who are concerned, the people of knowledge, the people of standing, the people of character, the leaders of the people, those who are looked up to, those whose opinions are valued, those who have a history of showing that they care about the Muslims and good advice and good opinions, those are the ones who would decide about leaders. Those are the ones who come together and lead. And those are the ones who come together to talk about leadership. Not the everyday person. That is not our system, Walid al-Basyuni. That's the system of America. That's the system of democracy, which is kufr outside of Islam. You ask us to stop this kufr stuff, we beg you, Walid. We beg you, Stop this kufr nonsense. Democracy is not Islam. Democracy is not from Islam. Democracy is not supported by Islam. لا نصا ولا إشارة Not by a text and not by any indication of a text. Democracy is the ruling of the people by the people. Not the ruling of the people by Allah and His book and the sunnah of His messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Democracy is what allows the people to make the rules up that fit their desires. This is jahiliya, this is not Islam. Walid, we beg you, stop this kufr nonsense. Choosing people who will bring benefits to that society. So what you're doing is something noble, something good, something halal. What you're doing is something noble, going to vote with no real known benefit, no fatwa from a scholar telling you this is the time to vote, to repel a hardship or a harm that is coming from one of the two parties. No scholar has given you the verdict to vote for Obama. Yet Walid Basyuni steps up to the plate. Walid Basyuni steps up to take the place of a scholar to give you his fatwa that you should vote for, for, for Obama. وَبِئْسَ مَا فَعَلْ May Allah Ta'ala forgive him and guide his treacherous tongue to aiding the Muslims and guided away from harming the Muslims. And I deeply believe in that. Remember that bad officials are elected by good citizens. And he goes on to talk about the system of voting and why it's important for people to vote and so on. Ikhwan, that is the Ikhwani pitch for voting. That has nothing to do with Salafiya. That's the Ikhwani pitch. That's what they raise their voices with on their minbars, in their Ikhwani masjids. Blaming the Muslims who don't vote. Saying any Muslim who doesn't vote is sinful. And so on. That's what they were saying back when George Bush was running for the election. They said George Bush is running against a man whose running mate is a Jew. So it's really clear. All Muslims have to vote for George Bush in 2000. And they raised their voices on the minbar treacherously. They busied the Muslims with what harmed them treacherously. They ignored seeking advice from the scholars of Islam and they turned to political activists like Sefer al-Hawali with his most harmful fatwas to every Muslim in every place, encouraging the American Muslims to vote for George Bush. And the Ikhwanis would raise their voices in their masjids. If you have an opportunity to put someone into office, and the vote was very close too, if you have an opportunity to vote for someone who would keep harm away from the Muslims or not harm the Muslims enough, and you don't do it, and someone gets into office who harms you as a result of your negligence in not voting, this was their call, then you are sinful, and you are betraying the ummah. billah. So they got their ikhwani forces together, and as to this day, Dr. Sefer al-Hawali, the political activist 
who was jailed in Saudi Arabia for his speech against the government, to this day he brags, he has an open letter to George Bush, you can look it up on the internet, where he identifies himself as the one who gave the fatwa for the American Muslims to vote for him, and he takes credit for getting George Bush into office through that. George Bush led the Americans for eight years, and you know what he did. Will these political activists, who time and time again give their unrequested fatwas in favor of this political figure or that political figure in a system of politics that is nothing but games and deceptions, strings being pulled by Jews and Muslims going for it? They give you these fatwas time and time again to keep you busy with their political goals, to keep you away from learning aqidah, to keep you away from learning your deen, to keep you away from the scholars that would help you and benefit you and warn you against such foolishness. This is the affair of Walid Basuni. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. Then you find that he's a signatory. He signed along with Yasser, Qadi, and the group of pretenders of Salafiyyah at that time, and we all know Yasser Qadi has come out as the clear opponent of Salafiyyah, declaring himself free of Salafiyyah, declaring himself that he was a person in his teenage years who might have been considered a Salafi. All of that is clear now. In uh, With Tawfiq Chaudhry, with so-and-so and so-and-so, all of their figureheads on the same da'wah, signed in an agreement in 2007, I believe, about six years ago, to cooperate in da'wah with a number of Sufis like Hamza Yusuf, Suhaib Webb, and so on. To not speak against each other and to not criticize each other, but to work together. The scholars of Islam have never accepted this. And the scholars of Islam have told us that upon them is to repent from that action. To clarify to the people that al-amru wa nahi Ordering the good and forbidding the evil doesn't know anything about a pact like that. A pact like that is in the hell fire. May Allah Ta'ala forgive the Muslims for giving them their ears. A pact like that is destruction. A Muslim represents Tawheed. A Muslim clarifies Tawheed, acts upon Tawheed and lives by Tawheed. He doesn't stand holding hands with a Sufi, Ash'ari, destroying the very foundations of Tawheed, and say we have to respect each other because Islam requires us to have cooperation between us. A true person of Tawheed knows nothing about this false unity. Rather, the unity from Islam is unity upon the correct aqidah. And all unity upon other than the correct aqidah is false fake unity that would only be agony and anguish upon the people who would try to unify through it. May Allah Ta'ala open the eyes of the Muslims and allow them to see these fake scholars for who they are, for these claimants to knowledge, these entertainers, these storytellers, and even magicians for who they are. Sure, there's a magician in their ranks, and sure, Walid Basuni doesn't do magic tricks, to the best of my knowledge. But he pats the magician on the back, and he tells him good job, and he defends him. So in fact, he may be worse than the magician himself. Because he may have more knowledge than the magician. He may be the authority which signs and stamps the officiality of the magician's actions. As they sell, and Maghrib Institute sells their courses using promotional videos that include magic tricks, like levitation. And the likes of Walid Basuni, in response to the people identifying illusionary magic as haram in Islam and not a da'wah tool, and kufr disbelief in Islam, he says, please stop this kufr nonsense. May Allah Ta'ala guide his tongue, may Allah Ta'ala guide his heart, May Allah Ta'ala distance the Muslims from his harm. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum.